It's Thursday. That can only mean one thing. He's the captain of cuisine, the culinary colonel, the Tabrizi talisman, the Farsi foodmeister, the Turkish tradesman. It's your chef, Has Zareh, and this is Rook Hospitality. Hi, this is your chef, Has Zareh, and this is Rook Hospitality. Hello, Chef Haas. Hello, Jean John. Hello, team. Hello. Hello. We have Ponta the Artist here today, you know, instead of uh, our, our dear Keon is out for the count for now. So Ponta's here. Hello. Hi, Ponta John. Hi. Nice having you here. And uh, nice to listen to you. Uh, the, it's my first time I'm, I'm here instead of uh, Keon, but... I, I'm happy. <laughs> Don't worry. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the okay. exa- chef. You're finally learning. Thank you. Uh, you're finally learning the tone of the show. That is excellent. <laughs> Good work. Okay. See you tomorrow at Clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Clubhouse. Yeah. Uh, chef, uh, I, I, before we start, I, I, I have to say I've seen your video. I've, 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 I'm actually very um, excited about what you're what you're talking about today. I'm posting, but I but let me just on a side note, a more superficial one, comment on your looks. Your hair has grown, and you really look like the extra member of Led Zeppelin that we haven't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you've got you like it's like if there was a Turkish uh, culinary Robert Plant, you've really uh, accomplished that look with the long hair and the, uh, you know, I mean, next thing we're gonna find you maybe on Clubhouse doing some old metal tunes. I, I don't know. Well, I'm trying to get the Captain Reds that maybe we can work on a movie together. Oh, there we go, <laughs> man. There we go. But yeah, I think you look great. I mean, you look like the the, you. the chef rock star the, that you are. So listen, I see what you are going to teach us today. We've got your video set. It's called Easiest Way to Make Perfect Limu Amoni, Dried Lime. And I was saying earlier in the show that um, I'm – uh, what the amazing part of this is that uh, I've always I've cooked with lima amoni that with dried lime before, but I always buy it. I didn't know, I had no idea that you could yeah, <laughs> take too. you take the lime and actually cr- make dried lime. So I'm very eager to get to that because you do this in the video. Um, let's start with first things first. What is the significance of lime and I guess acidic elements in Persian cuisine? Well, the first two points here. One is to look at the Persian foods, one of the oldest cuisine and most uh, uh, precise on the when it comes to luxury of eating and also thinking about the diet factor and medical factors. That's why since the fire came to picture acid, fat, salt, and heat. These four elements is on our food. And Iranian took this one the next level by generation and especially after Avicina, Abu Alicina, Avicina, he wrote about that and when we cook we cook on the balance of the dishes so the acid we use is acid accent the flavors of the food and beverage and not only flavors but it has a lot of uh, medical uh, benefits for us so uh, we will talk a little later but it's ama- in our cuisine and also we talked about pomegranate barberries l- sumac do you see that we are dominated by acid to not only enjoy the food, but also medical factor. And it was grown lusciously in the geographic, beautiful old Persia is still uh, present Persia. Interesting. Now, I mean, you make a great case for the, the lime and the acid. Why dried lime? Yes. So the old days, they were no refrigeration, all the seasonal. They were two reasons to call the stuff they like. One was luxury. They liked it. They want to have it. Two for necessity for the vintage. So. Uh, some items came from experimental, some by accident. Lime drops on the floor and sunny day, and if it stays for a few uh, days or 10 days, 20 days, they get dry, and people, they find out. And they say, wait a minute, we can do that one, save it for the uh, winter. So by that, they hold this the, uh, beautiful item 12 months a year, they can use it. And also, when you get the dried lime, it uh, get uh, acid and intensify the flavor and punch and in it is absolutely beautiful. You know, um, I, I don't. I I always when I cook for non-Iranian friends or when I've had uh, invited them for kebab or kormasabzi or something like that, they usually have never or. 
sometimes they haven't experienced dried lime before. You know, it's like a curiosity. Like, what is this? You know, I, I, because it's not used in Western cuisine as much. And particularly before you've cooked it, the dried lime, which is almost like a, a giant, um, I don't know, acorn or something. You know, it looks like a nut almost. You know, if you, it's got this hard shell. Um, it's, it's very uh, curious to see people's responses. So y- you've identified, I see in the video, some different techniques that they used to use or in preserving limes. Can you just explore a little bit of what the different techniques are? Absolutely. Before I say that one, I want to say difference of the limes. Limes are uh, from the key lime. It's expanded to the kaffir limes and dessert limes, Australian limes. And there's my favorite, favorite modern one is called finger limes that I later, I, if you like, I can, is when you break the lime, it looks like a caviar, but they're acid. It's perfect for garnish. So uh, it, it, these are the lime around the world, but Persian limes are smaller compared to kaffir, uh, kaffir lime or key limes smoother skin skin is uh, thicker so it holds us better and no seeds mm-hmm. so when we dry them and uh, it, it, it becomes a little bit uh, acidic and also sweeter and uh, that's the difference between the other limes so but, what i'm showing but your, that your, your techniques for preserving limes uh or drying the lime it, it can be used for any lime right or does it have to be a, a persian lime Yes, absolutely. So that's what I use the one I bought in the United States where I am where I am right now. So basically three ways of doing that one. The, on the video I am showing the first step that can go for all of them, which is that you want to wash them, salt them overnight, keep it and the day after boil in the water and acid. But after that, if you want an old fashioned way, just put in the uh, sun under the sun for 15, two weeks, three weeks uh, until get they dry and then bring it within a shade area for another couple of weeks, and then you have the dry limes. That's the old, long way of doing it. Now, with the technology, we can do in the oven, little technique needs it, or the special uh, the dehydrated machine ovens, you can use it, that one, you can buy it, but you don't want to spend the money. If you have your oven fan, you can use a fan, you want to put it on the lowest temperature, and you put it there overnight, in the morning you wake up, you have a beautiful dry lime. Or another technique I'm showing that, I, you know, which is as a chef technique, you can slice them and make it like in the 20 minutes the best as a garnish for your cocktail or grind them or you know cook it. Yeah. So I'm you, you show all of that. Way. You show all that in the This is a great video, by the way. We've had. Um, they get better each week. I think this is a. I think this is your best yet because it's really instructive, and you show us all kinds of different ways that you've learned to use dried lime and and how you dry the limes. I think it's a. It's a great. It's like seven minutes of of an education. And really well done. Um, thank you for that. And, and, and new music from Shia uh, behind you there in the background too. Um, I, I I guess uh, one thing that shocked me in the video was this idea that. I mean, people's commitment to creating great cuisine, great tastes in the past was so much deeper or um, than now where, you know, we expect to go to the corner store at the bottom of our apartment building and, and have whatever we need available to us. This idea that you would put limes out for a month <laughs> <laughs> for the sun to dry them I, it, it's just it's it's amazing it's like qu- quite a commitment yeah exactly They're not only like look at like we talked about that cash every single was in the summer there was a work on the preserving the food for the uh, winter and long way to use so they and they had a time labor of love everything doesn't come overnight and without technology, they use the old-fashioned way. But right now, we are spoiled, which is good. We're using the technology. We find a better way of doing that, faster way of doing that one. So it works out very perfectly. All right. Any questions before I have we a let question, uh, actually. Chef Hosko? Yeah, go ahead, Captain. Uh, so the, doing it the old-fashioned and traditional way, uh, whether it's cash or uh, lime or whatever, uh, isn't, that, does, isn't that better as opposed to the, the faster processing of it, putting it in, a, in the oven or whatever? The, don't you think that uh, makes it tastier is that is that true 100 ag- percent agree with you but oh. because of the, the new uh, health department and stuff like that they, they don't allow uh, uh, the manufacturing they do the old-fashioned because of the they're afraid that they might be contaminated and um, uh, poison something happens so mm. that's why all the new commercials want done with the technology um Ponsa, any questions about Lim- limo amoni uh, actually chef uh, chef has uh, reminds me uh 
long, long time ago when I was a child uh, in my uh, grandma's uh, house. Uh, she made uh, limu amani, she made shivid, she made lavashak or kashk. Uh, I, I remember every single time that I said to me, don't do it. But... No, no, no. No, no, no. Where was that? In Tehran? No, in Hamadan. In Hamadan. Ah. Yes. So I just want to get you guys memory lane. The old days in the house, you go to, a, we had a beautiful garden outside, right? Our, our houses, everybody. You yeah. see trays of lava shack, trays of uh, mm. bulgurs oh. to wa- cooked on the, f- uh, drying out. The herbs are under the sun drying out. The whole yard used to smell, look absolutely divine. When I think about that right now, I get goosebumps, I get emotional. I wish that those days I can come back to me, but at least I have memories. Mm. Yes, I, I think uh, as Shia would put it, you become goosebump. Everyone's mouth is watering. Uh, Chef Haas, thank you. Great work. Um, we, so if you go to rookmedia.com, our website, uh, Pots of the Artist will actually be uploading the, the new chef video at rookmedia.com or at our Telegram channel with a Farsi descriptor there as well. Chef, we'll see you tomorrow night on Clubhouse, right? For the, the Rook Town Hall? Not out uh, where I will be there, but I'm more likely tonight. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> We're not no, there, but if you want to wait. I know you're there all the there, time. Right? I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just making sure you're there for us tomorrow night. <laughs> no, tomorrow, I, absolutely. I will be honored. I, I am part of the team. I will be definitely be there. All right. That's <laughs> Friday night. If you're listening on Friday, it is tonight. Thank you, Chef Haas. Bye, Thank Chef. You. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful evening.